Got dreams of being a professional podcaster, but have no idea what you're doing? This is impossible. That's about to change. A new kind of school. Welcome to the Pod School Podcast. Hello there, welcome to the show. Today is all about getting more bang for your buck, because if you are going to put the time that we all know it takes into putting an episode together, then you want to walk away with a bit more than just an MP3. Getting multiple pieces of content out of one podcast episode is really important just to make that that time and effort stretch so much further. And the more assets that you have, the more you'll be able to promote and share and get your show in front of new ears and eyes, and that will grow your audience. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. So I'm going to go through a few options for different pieces of content that you can create so that you can start to think about which might be applicable to you. Not everything will work for everybody's show. And this, of course, isn't an exhaustive list. You can create whatever you want out of your episodes, but you want to look at the show that you're creating as something that can sprout other forms of content rather than thinking, oh God, I've got to come up with social media content from scratch. You don't if you've already done a podcast episode. You've got everything there in that MP3 ready to turn into other bits and pieces. So it is a really, really smart way to think about your content. The first option, of course, is audiograms. So these are social tiles that you animate. You can create them in platforms like Headliner and Wave. And basically, it's just got a little wiggly waveform on the image, which means when people are scrolling through social media, they tend to stand out a bit more than a static image because people are used to seeing things that are just flat images. And this has got a bit of movement like a video. So this can be a great way to promote little bits and pieces of your show. You should be cutting out promos, which are short grabs that highlight either something really useful from your show or alternatively a little bit of fun banter where you've got great chemistry between you and your co-host. If you're going to be using these on Instagram, they need to be less than a minute. So you want to keep them short, but it can be a great way to get your show out there in different ways and get people to hear it rather than just saying, hey, I've got a show and then them not actually being able to hear what is great about the show and give them a reason to listen. You can also do audio only sharing. So you could do promos. This is great if you want to share longer pieces of audio. So you could use a platform like SoundCloud and upload grabs and then share those out. So they don't have the visual element, but it's a great way to dive a little deeper with someone. Maybe you've had a great chat with a guest and you've got an excellent little promo piece that goes for three or five minutes or something, and it's really compelling and you want to share that whole thing, then sharing that as an audio promo can be a great idea. Obviously, it's awesome to have bits of audio of your show so that you can give people a sense of what they're going to hear when they hit subscribe. But you can also just pull quotes out of the content of your episode, whether that's great things that your guests said or or great little tips from you. And you can turn those into social tiles to share on social media like Pinterest and Instagram. They can be great little things that people want to tag and share, especially if you pull out quotes that make people think, oh, me too. I think that way too, or, or something that makes someone go, oh, that's a great piece of advice. You want to think about that when you're pulling out quotes. It's not just here are some words from my episode. It's what's something really insightful and engaging that's going to make someone go, oh gosh, if they say this, then this must be a show that I want to listen to. So that can really pique people's interest as well. And when you're pulling out quotes, you know, they're really short. So you might be able to get a bunch of different quotes from one episode, and then you might have 10 tiles, which is 10 different ways to share your show. And the more variety you have when you are sharing your episodes, the more likely you're going to catch the eyes and ears of different people who might not have been interested in the first quote that you sent, but are really interested in the fifth quote that you sent. So some of this stuff can take a while to chip away at. And the more assets you have available, the more chance you will have of getting people across to your show. The next bit of content is, of course, your show notes, which you should be making anyway for your episodes. But this is just a great place for people to come for additional resources. You can pop all of the links to anything that you spoke to. You can flesh these out and make these as detailed or as simple as you like. Ideally, you want to make them over 300 words and you want to have a good amount of keywords in there because your show notes can be a great way for people to find your show that might not be searching for it in a podcast app. So that's really important to keep in mind. And in addition to this, you can look at creating more blog posts around your episodes. So your show notes page is a form of a blog post 
post. But if you've got a topic that you could maybe dive deeper on or there's something that you touch on in the episode and you think, oh, this would be a great story to flesh out with photos and videos, there can be some really great content opportunities. So just look through your episode and think, are there any ideas here that might translate really well into blog posts? And again, this can be great to find new audiences and bring them into your podcast that might be searching and find you on your website. YouTube is obviously another great platform, but you want to be thinking about whether your content translates to video. So it's not super effective just to upload audio of your podcast and then shove a static image on there because you have to remember while people might find your video that way because YouTube is actually the second most popular search engine behind Google. But if they jump on there and it's just a static image, it's pretty unlikely they're going to stick around. And if you have a page on YouTube where people come because they think, oh, this is going to be interesting, but they click off really quickly, then that can be penalized within YouTube. So you can all of a sudden not turn up very high in search results. So ideally, you want to be thinking about video first. If you're doing content on YouTube, that could be as simple as filming your podcast episodes. You know, big shows like Joe Rogan do this. There's a lot of interest online to watch your favorite podcasters as they're doing their show. It also might be a way to actually introduce your podcast to people who don't know it's an audio show but might want to watch it on YouTube. You could also cut up different sections of your show and have them as individual videos, especially since people are searching for keywords. Maybe your show lends itself to separate videos that relate to different keywords and you could get a whole bunch of different content out of one individual episode rather than posting the whole thing online. Sometimes rather than making somebody sit through the whole thing, if you've got little bite-sized bits of content, that can work really well as well. So think about how you might be able to slice things up for YouTube and then you can do the same for social media. But obviously on social media, there is an opportunity for you to do things that are a bit more rough and ready. On YouTube, it's a good idea for you to get your videos looking as good as they possibly can because you think about YouTubers, they got the lights and the camera and the snazziness and you sort of don't want to upload something that looks a bit half ass but on social media you can be as half assed as you want. Well, not half assed in your content, but really that kind of I've just grabbed my camera and I'm going and talking to you as I go vibe is so acceptable and fine on social media. So you might be able to make some really simple videos for social that you couldn't get away with on YouTube, but you can be still playing with the same content. So the content can be the same, but you're just delivering it in different ways. And of course, other video options are maybe you could do TikTok or Instagram stories or Facebook. Facebook Live or Facebook Watch. There's a bunch of different ways that you can turn your content into video. So think about the stuff that you do on your show and how it might translate to audiences on different platforms. The other way you can do video content and photos as well is with behind the scenes stuff. Sometimes when you're putting an episode together, because it's work, you know, you're like, oh gosh, I've got so much to do to get this episode out. You forget that that's actually really interesting to people who love your show. They like to see how the sausage is made. So it's really nice to show them from time to time. Put a video together of you and your guest having a chat before you actually do the interview or maybe if you and your co-host do stupid TikTok videos before every record. There's a bunch of different ways that you can give people some insight into what it's like to work on the show that they really love. And people love seeing that stuff. I know sometimes it feels like just regular life to you, but it's really lovely to give people an insight into that. So think about how you could create some content around the making of your show so that people feel like they have even more attachment to the product that they listen to every week. Obviously, images are a really basic way to share your show, but something like infographics is a way to make an image just work a little bit harder. So infographics are a way to break down complex ideas and concepts in a visual way. They can be really as simple as just a one to five point list where you list off the different aspects of a certain topic. If you're teaching things on your podcast, you'd be surprised at how many infographics you can probably make out of the content that you are already creating. So have a look at what you've created. Think about, oh, would this work in an image? Could I create a diagram? Is there something that people would want to share that would be really helpful that would then maybe pique their interest enough to click and come and listen to the episode for even more detail and information? You can, of course, if you've got a bit of creativity up there in that head of yours, create 
create memes around your episodes. This might not be possible for every app, but sometimes something will pop up and you think, oh, this could be a really cute shareable graphic or image. So just think about how you might be able to create some of those. That's sort of shareable content that maybe doesn't pack much information, but can be just something really fun for your audience to tag their friends or share on their feed. That's really what you're looking for with any of the social content that you're creating. You want that engagement. You want people to think, oh, I love this. I want to share this with somebody I know. And that is hard, you know, because it takes some hard work to get that right. But when you do, it's really great to have those different elements of the show. So it's not just audio that people listen to once a week, but there's all these different ways that they can engage with the same content. It's also great if you are teaching to create additional resources around the content in your episodes. So that might be cheat sheets, or you could even do webinar content or presentation slides, things where people can dive deeper, learn, implement the things that you're talking about. They might have a PDF that would be really helpful or a checklist that they could check off to actually implement some of the things that you're talking about in the episode. Those kind of resources, if you are talking about things on your episode, can be super helpful for people and allow them to take the next steps. Or if it's a webinar, that could be a great way to get even deeper on a topic that you've touched on in an episode. So think about how you've got those opportunities for educational resources. And finally, think about how you can create content for your email list if you have one. An email list isn't going to work for everyone because it's a bit of hard work. You can't just have people's email addresses and then just ping them every time you release an episode and do nothing else. You've got to nurture that relationship. You have to give them content in exchange for the privilege of having their email address and a direct line into their inbox. So think about if you do have an email list, how you might create content for your audience from your episodes. That might be as simple as if you've got a guest on your show, you send an email with details about what it was like to interview that person, the behind the scenes, what you got up to. You might have a little something from them that wasn't included in the episode. You could also include audio that maybe didn't make the final cut or some videos from behind the scenes. There's a whole bunch of really interesting, engaging, useful stuff that you can provide via email so that people just think, oh, wow, I'm really getting something extra for giving my email address because the people that join your email newsletter are the ones that are willing to go above and beyond. They're the true fans who are like, I'm not just going to subscribe to your show. I'm also going to let you engage with me in my inbox. So make the most of that and think about what awesome content you can provide to them. So they'll think, gee, that was worth it. And not, God, I wish this person would get out of my inbox, which I feel with many people I've subscribed to. Don't let your listeners feel like that. Hopefully that's helped you think of a bunch of different ways to create content from your episodes. Make sure you are getting the most bang for your buck because you don't want to be putting in all that time and effort and only walking away with one piece of content. Enrollments for my online podcasting course, PodSchool, have been extended by a week, which is exciting. So if you have been umming and ahhing about starting your own podcast, but you want a little bit of help and you want to learn the best practice way to do things so that your show can not only exist, but maybe become a little bit of a success, then check out all the details at podschool.com.au. Of course, if you are enjoying this show and you think somebody else might find it useful, I would love you to leave a little review if you are able to do that in your podcast app or share it with a friend who is interested in starting their own show. I will see you next week and until then, happy podcasting. That's all for today. 